When I left university many, 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 many years ago, I didn't know what to do. And I wrote to a number of my fantastic professors for advice. And one of them was nice enough to write back to me and said, you should go into working for a development agency or small charity. And I emailed them. They rather liked the cut of my jib. And two weeks after my last lecture, there I was in the middle of Ghana in a town which merits 15 words on Wikipedia. I had 40 staff. I had two small businesses and a school to run. I had an internet connection slow enough that it would have been faster to attach my messages to a wandering pigeon. A pay of 43p an hour, and I'd never felt so alive. This talk is going to be about whether you might consider working in your 20s for a development agency or a small charity, which is what I did for a number of years. It is not meant to be comprehensive. I am not here to cover the whole of the field because there are hundreds of thousands of brilliant people who work in it for many, many fantastic organizations. I'm just going to talk about a few of my experiences and I'm going to talk about why some of you might consider it. Now, I got the bug in my first week of university when I saw the most incredible old member of parliament and politician, a man called Tony Benn. And he gave a speech, it was utterly fantastic, where he quoted Socrates, but added another line to it. He said, I am a citizen of the world, and it is my religion to make it better. And this has always stuck with me, and is one of the reasons that something like this appealed to me. Four things you need to know. Number one, it is still a job. This is me in the middle of Africa some years ago. And as you can see, I am in a really exotic world at this moment. No, I'm sitting at a desk. You still have to get up in the morning. You still have to be dressed properly. You still have to do emails. You still have to do meetings. You still have to be organized. It is still, like almost every job, a major component of it is being on time, having everything you need there, and helping other people be effective. The difference between it and jobs in other sectors, if you went into the grad schemes, if you stay in this country, is there is a tiny bit more accountability on yourself. In fact, there's a huge amount of it. In my third day in the job on the right, one of the Ghanaians who I was working with came in to see me and said, James, we've got a problem before lunch. I said, what is the problem? Uh, his name was Famous, a wonderful man. He said, well, the problem is, James, after lunch we've got sport, yes, and there is a poisonous snake on the sports field. Okay. So we go out onto the sports field, and there is a really quite venomous snake right um, in the penalty box. It would have been impossible for anyone to score at that end. Now, this may have been advantageous for one of the teams, but still, we probably had to do something about it. And it's famous in the wonderful security guard, Justice, who's got a gigantic machete, and they're looking to me for what to do. And it makes you realize, and this adds to various things that will stay with me till the end of my days, I was educated by my, my parents were incredibly generous and ensured I got an incredibly expensive education. Doesn't matter. In that moment, in that place, I am very much the child and they are looking at me. And I can sum up every moment of that day. For the record, I delegated as all good managers do and they chopped it up in rather effective ways. I can remember every moment of that day. I'm an old man now, it's quite hard for me to remember what happened for breakfast. But my time out there, I can remember every single moment of it. It stays with you. It is, in fact, life with the roof off. You are in places which you won't go to otherwise. They aren't on the tourist trail. That is Baduda, one of the most incredible places in Uganda. Literally, the road goes to it, loops around and goes back down the hill. You don't get many tourists out there. And it is a truly marvelous place to spend some time. My third pitch is perspective. I had a very privileged upbringing. And to go to a part of the world where running water was not guaranteed, to go to a part of the world where you travel in a Toyota van with 22 other people, three babies and an incredible amount of chickens to get from place to place, adds to one perspective. It's a very memorable commute, I can tell you that. And this is 70 of the students that I had. 
And this is when we'd raised some money, done some grant work, and managed to get some clothes delivered to them. Most of them are holding the first new thing they had ever owned. New shoes, a new shirt, new underwear, which out in the developing world is a major problem. I will never forget that day where you are helping people with something that genuinely is changing their lives a little bit, just a little bit. Something anyone can do if they really want to. And I can tell you it's incredibly rewarding. Seeing these people the next day running four miles from very, very unsophisticated dwellings to the school, singing the whole way seeing how incredible they dealt with any adversity. I can tell you it adds perspective when the bus is late or when the queue at lunch is too long. It makes it a little bit easier to deal with that. My final pitch, making a small difference. It's not the savior narrative. That world is complicated and I'm not here to tell you that you can change the world. I'm telling you that you might make a small difference with a small number of people. There is an incredible amount of responsibility out there if you choose this path. There's an incredible amount of good that can be done if you choose this path in the small steps every day. The other side of it is that if you get it wrong, often there are very serious consequences. And if you are considering this work, you would have to consider how strong you are and whether you could deal with occasionally a mistake happening and it being you who has caused a serious mistake to happen and a serious problem. It was an incredible four years, and I think if any of you are considering it, please email me, and I can put you in touch with some people. Anyway, that is my talk on making a small difference and considering a time in the developing world. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.